Hey friends, welcome back to Shawnee on the Spot. In this video, I am showing you how to make this cute Valentine Diva on canvas. Now you can grab an image from anywhere and print it out, but for me, I purchased this image off of Etsy. And because I have a Cricut Explorer, I was able to download it, crop some of it out and print it out. Now, I'm starting also off using a canvas that I purchased from Hobby Lobby. It's a 12 by 12. I also have a small wreath form purchased from the Dollar Tree. And there is my image that I have printed and cut. Now again, I cropped it before I printed it to not include the hair because I did not want to waste my black ink. So before I printed it, I cropped it and then I cut it out. And so I'm placing it on the canvas just for a moment to see how I want to place it along with the wreath form and how I want to um, present it on the canvas because I'm going after a piece of wall art as opposed to an actual wreath. Now this same thought I've used because I've seen it be pretty popular the last couple of years. So I tried my hand a few times at the huge uh, diva wreaths that you can put on the large uh, wreath forms that you can buy at the Dollar Tree. But for this, I wanted to do a mini version and just trying to see what I can do to be creative. So here I'm taking my image and I turned it over and I'm just putting some Mod Podge on the back. And I'm doing it on the whole um, piece of the image because I want it to stick all the way onto the canvas and I want it to stay there. So I'm put, taking my time and painting the Mod Podge on. Now I marked on the canvas a little dot because I wanted to remember where I selected that I liked the placement of the picture. And so the image, I'm spreading it out and I'm just making sure there's no air bubbles and putting it on the canvas. And so here, because I already knew where I wanted to place my wreath form, I am securing it with some of the um, pipe cleaners or the Chanel stems that I have that I'm going to be using and we all know that pipe cleaners have a wire in them so they'll be pretty secure now what I didn't show was that I had uh, popped a couple of holes using my scissors so that I can thread the Chanel piping through the canvas so that I can just secure it like that and I'm showing you that it's pretty secure and on the back you'll see where I brought it through and I just twisted and I'll secure it a little bit better in a little bit. Um, but I just wanted to show you how I put the actual small wreath form and attached it to the canvas. All right, so then I have my mesh. Now the mesh I did get from the Dollar Tree. It's okay, but I prefer the actual, you know, more expensive mesh that you get like at Hobby Lobby because it doesn't fray as much when you're cutting it. But because I'm doing a mini version of the uh, wreath, I wanted to not use the large roll of um, mesh because I didn't want to waste it. So I'm using the Dollar Tree uh, Deco Mesh, which is okay to use. But again, I'm using it because I'm doing the mini version. And so what I'm doing is I'm just rolling it up to kind of form what's going to be the hair for my Diva. And I'm uh, putting the pipe cleaner or the Chanel stem and I'm just wrapping it around and kind of leaving it um, with the ends out. I'm not like tucking them in or anything and you'll see why that's important so I'm doing both red and white for this particular uh, diva wreath but this can be done seasonally I've done these for um, Christmas of course fall um, Valentine's Day the spring depending on this time of year you can use whatever deco mesh colors that you choose to use now I'm showing you how I'm securing it onto the actual D, uh, form of the wreath. Now I'm taking the back of the um, Chanel stem that I have already wrapped around the deco mesh and I'm going like an up and over kind of a motion onto the wreath form. Now those of you that are familiar and have made plenty of wreaths, it's the same process, it's the same concept, the same thought process where we're taking the deco mesh and we're adding it to the wreath form. Now people do theirs differently. This is just the way I'm choosing to do it at this time. There are other methods that you could use to attach your um, deco mesh to the wreath form. Um, for the actual wreaths that I make, I use um, zip ties because those seem to hold a little bit better. 
but in this case I am using the Chanel stems and they seem to work just fine so I'll let you see just real quickly how I am attaching them to the wreath form and I'll come right back Now I do speed up the video a little bit because I didn't want to spend too much time of you just watching me put the, um, the deco mesh on the wreath form, but I think you guys get the idea of how it is done. And so here I'm alternating between red and white. I'm doing mostly red and just putting a few um, white pieces of deco mesh in because I wanted to blend together you know with red and white because that's the color scheme that I am going for again you can actually also use flowers or some other type of creative um, materials that you want to use for your diva's hair so here as you see it's getting a little bit more full as I continue to put even more of the deco mesh and again I had pre-rolled some and now I have to figure out how I'm going to get them in the middle so what I did was I poked some more holes as you can see with my scissors they were real easy so that I can push through the Chanel stem and that way I'll have deco mesh in the middle of my divas fro <laughs> And I'm just pushing them through and then I'm going to turn it over and twist on the back and kind of show you um, how that's being done. It's real simple. I'm just twisting it kind of like how you would twist on the tie on your like your grid. <laughs> All right. And so I'm securing it and it's actually staying pretty good. I didn't have to add anything additional. Now on the back you could secure it with a little bit of hot glue if you wanted to. But I didn't see that it's necessary since I'm making this for myself. This is actually the first attempt at me doing this particular project on canvas. So I appreciate you bearing with me because again, this is my first time. I've made this wreath plenty of times, but never on canvas. So this was an idea that was floating in my head. I saw something similar on Pinterest and been thinking, how can I do this? And so this is my... Um, my thought process i'm sure that someone has done this before so maybe you have if you've done it let me know if you see something i could have done differently to attach my deco mesh onto the actual canvas but right now i'm trying to decide if i want to keep going or if i want to do something different i think i have an idea it's something that i did with one of my reefs um, a couple years ago and instead of continuing i thought about putting maybe a head wrap so i'm sitting here thinking and I went and found a piece of uh, red fabric that I already had. I already had this from a DIY that I tried and didn't complete. And it's um, just a piece of red fabric. And on the inside, I have a little bit of batting just to kind of make it be a little fluffy. And so here I am taking my fabric and I am tucking it under the wreath form to kind of secure it and see if this is going to work. Again, this is my first time attempting this on canvas. It's happening at real time, y'all. I just wanna let you know. So if there's mistakes, you guys will see them as well. All right, so here I'm just pulling it through, trying to get as much of the fabric um, secured underneath the uh, wreath form. And yes, I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue, but I wanted to get it secured under there before I began to manipulate it with hot glue. All right, so there I have it to where I think it'll stay pretty good if I just go ahead and do the hot glue. So I'm showing how it may look. I'm deciding if that's the look I'm going for, and I'm like, you know, it's, it's okay. I'm going to go ahead and go for it. And let's go ahead and see what happens from here. All right, so here you see me putting the hot glue on. I'm just taking it and putting it underneath the fabric to secure it. Now be careful because hot glue is just like it is, hot. And I've burnt myself a couple of times, even in this video, 
And so I would just want to be uh, mindful that I'm working with hot glue. But because I've worked with hot glue for many years, my fingers are kind of immune. But I would suggest that if you're working with hot glue for the first time, that you be careful of the temperature and be careful that um, you do not burn yourself. So here again, I'm trying to form it and get it shaped the way that I want to have her head wrap kind of secure to the canvas. And I'm just, you know, manipulating it a little bit until I get it right. Again, I'm doing this in real time. So I see so many things already that I would do differently if I were to do this project again, which I'm going to do this project plenty of times because I'm going to make this for a couple of other people who've already asked me to make it, even before they knew I can actually do it. <laughs> All right, so here I'm just showing you, I'm trying to get her eyebrow to show a little bit because I didn't want to cover that up too much. So here I have it all secured and glued down. And now I'm deciding if I want to use some rhinestones um, along the uh, crown of the hair tie there and I decided that I do and again like I said I see so many things I would have done differently instead of grabbing each of the acrylic gemstones um, and putting hot glue individually because you run the risk of burning yourself um, towards the end I kind of wised up and just put a stripe of the hot glue directly onto the fabric and quickly placed my acrylic gems on there that way now the acrylic gems i did get these from the dollar tree they're um really cute they're a little bit iridescent when you look at them they are uh, very sparkly as well so i decided to put them there like i said i am building this as we go i'm not 100 percent sure of all that i'm going to do but i have an idea of what i want it to look like in my head and so i'm just flowing along that way Alright, so I think I'm pretty okay with the way it's turning out here. Um, I did have a huge acrylic gem that I put at the front. You kind of see it there. It was just a clear one. And so here she is so far. I'm not done. And now I'm looking at it. Okay, what can I do? I think I want to add some type of makeup or some type of uh, glossy lip or something and also something around her earrings as well so when I'm looking at it here um, I'm still deciding what to do so I decided I do want to go ahead and add a lip and I said you know I think I want to use some glitter so I'm putting some Mod Podge with a little bit of a thin brush and I'm just brushing it on to her lips there and getting ready to apply some red glitter now the glitter I also got from the Dollar Tree. All right, and so with that, I'm just taking off the excess glitter. And then I'm looking and thinking, okay, I'm while I'm brushing off the excess glitter, I'm thinking, okay, what else do I want to do with her? And I thought, well, since I've given her a shiny lip with a little glitter there, I'm thinking I might want to do a little bit of her eye as well. So I'm going to take some of um, that Mod Podge again, and I'm going to go above her eyelash there on her eyelid and go in with a little bit more Mod Podge. And I'm going to go in this time with some silver glitter. Now again, I'm building this as we're going. So I'm thinking I'm liking the silver glitter. It's adding a little bit of shine to my diva. And at this point, I'm like, okay, I took off the excess. Now I'm thinking I need a little bit more of an eye. She's a sassy diva, so let's give her a little bit more. So I'm gonna go ahead and go in again with some more Mod Podge. And just a thin layer, just enough to where I want my glitter to stick pretty good. And then I'm gonna go back to my red glitter and I'm gonna go on top of the silver glitter with the red. Now if you see me patting it a little bit, that's just to push it down into the glue to get it to stick. 
And then I'm thinking about the earring as well while I'm waiting for that red glitter to dry a little bit and I'm popping off the excess and it looks okay. I eventually go over it a little bit more um, off camera to kind of define it a little bit more as well. So now I'm considering the earring. Now I thought about the earring. I had some gemstones that I was gonna put around the earring, but because it goes wide and it kind of just didn't sit right with me to have a, uh, the earring start thin and then go wide, that mean I would have to double up my rhinestones and it just didn't look right. So I decided to go ahead and do glitter again. So here I am with my little brush and going over that area with some Mod Podge. And again, I'm just doing a thin layer, enough that my glitter will stick. And I'm doing it kind of quickly because I don't want it to dry out on me. And then I just take my glitter and just go around just in the spot where the glue is at, or the muck glue. All right, so at this point, I am just putting more glitter on to be sure I cover all my spots where I have Mod Podge, pressing it in just a little bit to be sure it sticks. And I'm gonna give it a few seconds here and let it set before I, of course, shake off the excess. All right, and I'm pretty okay with the way it turned out. I think it looks pretty good. There's still a little bit more that I'm gonna add to her, um, including a border. Now I decided to go in with this um, Dollar Tree bling wrap that I already had on hand. I didn't really plan to do this. It was kind of an afterthought, but I wanted something to kind of bring it in like a little border as well. And so um, you can do anything that you want to do here. I thought about some ribbon. I thought about um, doing all just real huge rhinestones. I mean, there's all kinds of ideas that you can do for your border if you choose to do a border. Um, the other thing I thought of was also adding some words because I do have my Cricut Explorer. I can add a saying. I can even add a scripture reference. I can add a name as well. So here is my finished look of my Valentine Diva on canvas. Isn't she lovely? I am so satisfied with the look. Now I do, like I said, I see several things that I could have done differently, but that's how we do it. We, we learn like that. And so I know what I will do differently next time um, and just continue to uh, create this look different ways for different seasons. This one is specifically for Valentine's Day, but I have some ideas even for the spring, fall, and even next Christmas doing it sort of like this, but a little bit different. So tell me what you guys think. Is this something that you would be interested in making? I would love to see if you made it. If you do, tag me, send me a message, and let me know that you made one so I can take a look at yours. <laughs> All right, now, again, you can have any variation of colors, any style, but this is what I call Valentine Diva on Canvas. All right, guys, thanks for stopping by. Again, remember, be kind to yourself.